So what we'll talk about here is that currently our project, um, we set it up with uh, PhoneGap, aka Cordova, version 2.9.0, which is more than a year old. And since then, Cordova has continued to expand. It was it went through a whole family of 3.1 and 3.5 and 3.6, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then uh, very recently, I believe now they're on 4.0.1, something like that. They're on the 4 branch now that there's the whole Android 5 branch. So our app is still in the old version. And here's the, here's the conundrum that you face, uh, either to uh, upgrade your existing app um, or, or start over. So taking our current project and changing the appropriate files and the appropriate um, code to bring it up to spec to the latest. That's one way to do it. And the other is um, to create the, 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 the 4.0 template and then put your HTML into it. And I think that way is much more feasible. Um, here we've got the 2.9 template and then our app we put into it at the beginning of last month's class. So I would say let's talk about creating the template file for the later for the newer version of Cordova and then putting our app into it. Um, the biggest challenge is just creating that template file because it used to be that you go over to phonegap.com or this one that we're going to start looking at today cordova.apache.org and there is no more download the latest version the latest templates now you have to do it via the command line so uh, if you recall I had a PDF from the previous month I put it in the folder again just to if you want to if you want to grab it again to look at it because we'll be going through that process um, so if you go into the network folder in our current class, you don't have to go back to the previous class, in our current class, Campus Android 3, which I gave you last month anyway, but you should have a file. You can get it, you can get the file right now, and it's Campus 6, Cordova 3.6. Um, that's what I gave you last month. It didn't, uh, I, I, this, these computer, this, my computer had a problem in that it kind of installed, but not really, and I had to uninstall it, but Cordova, or part of the whole foundation for this is Node.js, which is at currently at 10, at 0 0.10.33. When this was installed, it was 10, 0 0.10.30. So when I was trying to uninstall that, it says, please provide the uninstaller for 10.30. And I'm like, well, it's not even installed on this computer anymore. So I had to dig deep into the archives of Node.js to find the old version to uninstall this broken version. And now I managed to install the newer version. But if you open up that PDF, we're going to go through this. We started to previously, but we'll look at it uh, for real this time. So these things should already be installed on these computers. If you're doing this at home, you're going to go to nodejs.org. There's a download for Windows, for Mac, for Linux, 32-bit, 64-bit, whatever flavor your computer is, you want to download it and install it. So everything that the latest version of PhoneGap, of Cordova, that, um, that now I want to use runs via typing in DOS commands. Uh, and that requires that we've got Node.js installed. So taking a quick look over there, Node.js.org. We don't have the latest version on our computers. We'll check which one it is, but it's already installed. And this is a um, for creating uh, for creating apps. But what we'll do is we'll on the start menu. Go to your start menu and so go to your Windows start menu here and you can start typing node 
and one of the results should be node.js command prompt. Does everyone see that? If you do go ahead and launch it, does anyone not see that? So simply search start menu for node, and you should get node.js command prompt. So we need to write a few uh, DOS commands here uh, to make sure that this is all working as per my documentation here. I'm going to take a quick look at some version numbers. Uh, so I'd go ahead and type java-version. Mine says java 1.7.0 underscore 21. Does anyone say anything different? Underscore 28? 1.8. Oh, okay. You have an even newer version than mine. Okay, so I should be fine. So you've got Java installed and the computer recognizes, or the command line interface recognizes its path. I'll take a quick look here then. I should also have another component, ant. Let's type ant space dash version. And then mine says Apache Ant version 1.9.4. Does anyone have anything besides that? Okay, I think that's that's good. That's the latest one. The Java, they're always updating that. And they are at 1.8 something at the moment. And uh, they're always updating it. But Ant, it doesn't seem to have been changed in a while, which is good. What we're currently running is, is the command prompt, but we're running it uh, via Node. And I want to take a quick look here what version you guys have installed. So now simply type node dash, uh, node space dash v. Not version, just v. And mine says 0 0.10.33. What does yours say? 30. 30. 30. Okay. It should be fine. And next, type npm, that's node package manager, npm dash, uh, space dash v. And it's version 1.4.28. You guys have. 21. Okay. Okay, do me a favor and type uh, Cordova. C-O-R-D-O-V-A. Um, do you get a Cordova is not recognized? No. What do you guys get? A lot of stuff. Pages and pages. Okay. 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 Just one moment here. Hopefully this won't be a redux of last time, actually. Uh, but um, if you type Cordova, that's the command that we use to start to create Cordova templates. Uh, once I get mine set up here, hopefully then I'll be able to do it. If not, I'll try my laptop. So, um... I got what you got. Yes, uh, I was just checking. On mine wasn't installed, so yeah. now it's installed. So my problem was, and the documentation, um, I believe I say it here. Yes, number eight here. Um, it's already done for you guys. I needed to do it. My step number eight here says you want to type this command. Don't do it. You've already got it. npm install dash g Cordova. And now... I don't. You don't? Okay, just to confirm this. Let's do Cordova dash V. Cordova dash Cordova space dash V. What does yours say? 3.5? 363. Three, three. Three, three. Okay, so mine's 4.1.2. I have 4.2, but I'm on the left. Yes. I, I did it weeks ago when we first read the instructions. There is a way to upgrade yours to my version, which is 
and maybe we have to do it via npm. Well, let's give this a try. Let's try this. Um, uh, okay, let me clear this just to show you. Okay, so uh, try this. Type uh, npm dash uh, npm space hmm. upgrade Cordova. So no fly G dash G. Let me just confirm if that's the right command. Update npm update Cordova. npm update Cordova dash g. All right, so try that npm space update space Cordova space space dash g. Are you getting feedback, maybe, of something happening? What's your, what's your uh, version be? Mine is 4.1.2. Okay. What is this? Well, I had to install like you did. Okay. So I got 4.1.21. Oh, okay. Here we go. I can't read it. So the very first time that I want to install Cordova, at a point in time, I type the npm install Cordova dash g. And it downloaded all of the appropriate files, and it gave me the version of Cordova at that point, which was when it was installed for you guys. It seemed to be 3.5 and some of you 3.6. Since I just installed it, it gave me 4.1.2. Uh, then. If you want to update it later on, um, we go back to NPM, which is the Node Package Manager, and we're saying update our software of Cordova. G is supposed to generate output like uh, feedback. Um, and now, if that if that gave you output and stuff, at the end on the last command line here, type Cordova dash V one more time, just to see did it did that upgrade you to four point one point two. Very good. Anyone need a little help? Again, this is not everyone's forte, especially not anymore. You know, 20 years ago, maybe even, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, um, a lot of stuff was on a command line more commonly. Um, I remember uh, my, uh, my my first computer in high school was a, uh, was, uh, well, the short answer is that I got ripped off. I paid way too much for it. It was an old uh, PCXT uh, in the in the mid 90s so even at that time it was out of date but it was it had DOS 3.6 I think or 3.3 uh, and then I upgraded it to DOS 6.2 so it was command line interface and then of course uh, more graphical interfaces came out and that's what we have pretty much nowadays but sometimes you still need to get into command line especially it seems more and more in, in app development and web development so this might not be everyone's forte that's why I wrote it it down on my documentation here, although you do want to make a note about <coughs> upgrading it, which is npm update. Question, Fred. So when you do the npm update command, it's actually going out onto the internet and grabbing the latest version? Mm -hmm. So you need an internet connection so it can connect to the server and give you the latest version of Cordova. Yes. Question. Mine complained about uh, the older version, uh, but also I said that um, there was a permission issue and it wanted me to do the command is root, so I had to do a yeah, sudo, sudo. Uh, uh, for that. So you might keep that in mind if you uh, write any notes for, uh, for Mac. So. Mm -hmm. so if you're using Mac, you might have to have elevated privileges. Right now, our our command line interface uh, is elevated enough that we don't have to write that command. But here's a quick note here. What we're saying is that if you're on the Mac and you're doing this on the Mac, you might have to do sudo first and then the rest. npm update. Cordova G. That doesn't work on Windows, so make a note it's not for Windows. Yeah. Right, so is your is your screen getting really cluttered? 
a lot of text here, a little, little cluttered. You can clear the screen with this um, classic DOS command, CLS. Clear screen, I guess it stands for. CLS. We'll think about it as clear screen. Type CLS, press enter, and we get a nice clear screen. My notes mention also that some stuff was installed for you. Where did that software that we installed end up? I believe most of it is here on your hard drive in your user account. There's a folder in there called .cordova. So that's where that stuff is in, FYI. So to actually create the template, step 10 right here. We're going to type the Cordova command, which we will then use to create our template. We give it various attributes and parameters, options. Number one, what is the what is the folder of the app we're creating? In my case, test zero two, no spaces. And then here's where we write that package name. Remember the com dot your last name whatever, and the name of the app right there. And then after that, in quotes could be the name itself of the app. So remember, previously we just you know opened existing Android project in Eclipse and we were off and running. Here we need to create it this way. So um, let's go ahead and type here. Uh, well, let's do it just to confirm. Um, so here it shows the, the path. I'm on the hard drive, um, C drive in the user's instructor. Type dir just to orient yourself directory listing. This is inside of the folder of your of your user. Type the DR, these are all the folders. You should have one called desktop. So we're gonna switch to the desktop and we're gonna install this app onto the desktop. We're gonna lose it if we don't know where we're installing it to. So if you type DIR, it'll give you a directory listing. It'll give you the folders your current, it'll show you the folders in the directory in the folder you're currently in. One of them is desktop. So we'll type cd for change directory space desktop uh, capitalization doesn't matter on windows type cd desktop cd space desktop and then your path here should then say okay you're in your user account yours is lab mine is instructor and it should then say you're on the desktop everyone see what Type dir F just for your information. You'll see that's the stuff on my desktop. So, okay. <coughs> so make sure you're on the desktop. And we'll type Cordova create Cordova space create. We're about to create a brand new Cordova slash phone gap template. And we need to tell it the name of the folder, so we'll just call this uh, test02 space. Now you have to remember, what was, the, what was the name that you put in your app in Eclipse? What I mean is the name that you used in the Android manifest. Remember this? Mine is com.campos, and then the name of that app, which is Campos My SDCE. So most likely here, you're going to type com dot your last name dot the name of this app, which we're going to call test02, the same as the folder. Space. And then in quotes, we can type the name that will appear on the app, you know, as the actual real name with spaces and caps and such. So we'll do quote test with a capital T space zero two. So that's Cordova create name of the folder, your package name, name of the app. Press enter. It'll think for a moment. 
creating a new Cordova project with name test2 and ID com, whatever you typed, on this location on the desktop, downloading Cordova library. So it's downloading the latest version of, of the code, um, you know, Cordova 4.1.2. Mine says download complete. Anyone get any errors? If you did, it, it didn't say that, downloading Cordova library. What does yours say? Uh, it just merely said creating a new Cordova project with the name and then uh, some additional information, which is like you know, on the first thing. Mm -hmm. And then if I look into the directory, I see that there is the one that was created for test zero two. With uh, yeah. it just didn't give you this feedback, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Looks oh. like it. Because it was also very quick. So I don't know. Maybe updating it to cause it to download the library at that time. Maybe. Um, this is specifically downloading the source of a, of, a, of a project, of a Cordova project, whereas previously we downloaded the ability to create projects. So did anyone get any errors here? Anyone need some help? Okay, type, um, type dir one more time if you want, and you'll see in the list here You'll see a directory, so all the folders are marked with directory in this column here. This is a directory for test 2. Now we need to go into that folder, we need to open that folder, so we'll type change directory again, cd. What I am talking about are in my notes, remember. Okay, so type that, type cd test 2, etc. So type cd test 2 the name of the folder you created, which to confirm there it is in the directory output. CD. And now you should see your path is you're in on the desktop inside of test2. Type uh, Cordova platforms and press enter. Cordova space platforms, enter. This will just give you a little feedback to say what platforms have been installed. In this case, nothing. And these are the platforms that are available for you to create a template for. Mine says Amazon Fire OS, Android, Blackberry, browser, that's a new one, Firefox OS, Windows, I think this is Windows, Windows 8, and Windows Phone 8. So I can create these templates for all of these platforms and use the power and the concept of Cordova again, which is to create HTML5 based projects, which will then deploy, which will then be con converted or compiled into all of these platforms. Notice one very big one is missing. iOS, Apple. We can't create iOS apps on a Windows computer. James here, you see yours, right? Yours says iOS right there. So we, these are all of the types of apps that we could create. However, um, we, we won't be able to do them all just by typing a command, because these all rely that you've got the SDK installed. We've got the Android SDK installed, so we, we know we'll be able to do Android. If we try to install one of these other types of app templates, like Windows Phone or BlackBerry, it'll give us an error. It says, where's the SDK? So you could, ins you could create those other types of apps, but you still need more software. So available platforms. OK, let's add the Android platform. Let's, let's create an Android project. So we'll type Cordova platforms add Android. I think it'll work either or. We'll see. Cordova platforms add Android. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think we can force it to give us a certain version number. I have to look that up. But uh, Cordova platforms add Android. You should get a little bit of feedback. You should see that NPM is, a, is connecting to this server to download Cordova. In my case, it's 364. Does yours say 364 also? That's not, even though I thought we had 4.12. It's downloading it, getting those files, etc. Cordova. Could it be that that's the Cordova version number and not the, uh, not the Android uh, version number? Mm -hmm. No, it, it, that's that's the case. We, we're, the Android version number would be you know over here, Android nineteen. Mm -hmm. We where all of this is about the Cordova or the Phone Gap template. So that's a bit odd there. I will mention that in the case of the iOS, it comes with three point seven. Mm -hmm. So it's slightly different. Uh, And I noticed something right there, actually. Okay, so uh, it says that stuff, and it says creating an Android project, and a bunch of feedback right there. Uh, it did find uh, our Android SDK and such, so it allows us to do it. Uh, it's it's etc. There, we currently have Android 19, the API 19 installed on these computers. If you got uh, Android 5.0, it would say Android 21. Copying templates, project successfully created. I'm going to clear my screen because it can get a little cluttered, so CLS. Actually, did this not work for anyone? Okay, so I'm going to clear screen, CLS, and type directory, DIR. I want to see what it gave me. There it is there. We can actually also do this. Go ahead and open a, a, a computer window and go to your desktop. Let's go back to the GUI for a moment, the graphical user interface. You open an Explorer window, you should see your test too. Everything we did in the command line interface, the CLI, also shows up here in the GUI. So you sh if you open up test 2 there on your computer window, you know I'm seeing here, what I'm seeing there. So it might be a little faster to kind of explain what's here instead of on the on DOS for a moment. But what I've got is a folder of plugins which will house our basically our permissions. Remember that I said on, on, on the 2.9 version it gives us all permissions and it's our job to turn them off. Starting with 3.0 it gives us no permissions and we have to turn them on. They're gonna also be housed under here plugins. Uh, hooks, which you can read me. What does that say? Cordova hooks represents special scripts, which could be added by applications and plugin developers. Okay, so this is to add more plugins. Then we've got platforms, Android. That looks a bit familiar. Inside of there, I'm seeing. I'm seeing like a, that template that I would normally just take out of the zip file that I can open in um, in Eclipse. So the actual file that we can import into Eclipse is found inside of the platforms folder. If I had installed the other platforms, they would also be listed here: Firefox, Windows Phone, iOS, etc. So that's what I just did right there. I installed a Firefox platform. Now, I've never done any Firefox development, so that's as far as I can go. But um, the Firefox platform files are there. It's HTML5 based and all of that. I just need to find out what else I can do with it. I can make a Firefox OS app. But here's the problem. If I, uh, let's say I do this for all the possible you know, platforms. I do this for iOS, Android, Windows Phone. 
and I've got all my platforms here. Then I can use Eclipse to open up the Android folder and work on the Android app. And I can open up Xcode and work on the, the iPhone app version. And then I can open up Visual Studio and work on the Windows Phone uh, version of it. The problem then is that all of the code bases are diverging. Each one of those platforms I'm editing with a different IDE, different software, so they're, they, they're going to diverge. So if I back up over here, into this WW folder. That's what I really need to edit um, to be to save myself some prob some effort. This is the folder that will ultimately trickle down to all platforms. So if I edit my app here, if I add my project into this folder. Um, and run some more commands about building the project and such, then this will get copied and get deployed to every... Uh, to the proper platform. So that's pretty useful. So, okay. <clears throat> Make sure I understood what you just said there. The separate www folder can be a central uh, central place for that. You don't have to go into the individual ones, which are structured a little different than others. Mm -hmm. um, yes, exactly. You work uh, on your app. This is your central code base, and then via more of the command line interface here, then we say build Android app, and it'll take what we wrote there, use your SDK, and then publish your APK for Android, or we can say. Uh, Cordova build iOS and it'll take your iOS SDK and then take this and publish it publish your what is their extension file dot IPA I believe and then you've got an iPhone app okay. That's useful. let me do one more thing here um, does everyone have a virtual device running if you don't, take a moment to load a virtual device. So Eclipse is a development environment where we can click some buttons and choose some settings and do what we need to do. But you can still do everything here via the command line, which obviously means you need to either memorize the commands or have them always on hand so you can type them. Um, so for example, our project this one that we just created, I want to see what does it look like in my emulator. We can do that by uh, the, the command line interface. So let me just load up my virtual device here and we'll see how to do that. You can um, oops, it passed by. Type Cordova space build space Android. Put it up here. Cordova space build space Android. Yes. You, you should still be in the, the directory of the project. I've, I've pressed enter before I showed you, but you should still be in the test2 directory. Right here. Make sure in DOS you're in the test2 directory, and then type Cordova space build space Android. So here we're saying, okay, build my app, my Android app. 
if you say simply Cordova build, it will be smart enough to go through all of your possible um, SDKs and create the app for all the SDKs you have on hand. So if you do have the Visual Studio SDK to create Windows Phone apps, and the uh, Firefox SDK to create Firefox OS apps, and the Android one, you just type Cordova build, it'll build apps for all three of those platforms at once. Since we've only got Android, I selected Android, but you'll still get the same result if you simply type Cordova build. Mine has a bunch of stuff. I don't believe I got any errors. Build successful, total time 35 seconds. Build the following, and so it shows that my app, my APK, the debug version is in the in the folder. So try that. Did you get a build successful eventually? Mine's faster. Oh, good. How much did it say? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight seconds. Twenty seconds. Oh, of course. <laughs> So, okay, so then we'll type Cordova emulate Android. So what it'll do is, I believe even if you don't have an emulator running, I think it loads one up, but I've got an emulator running and I've told it Cordova emulate Android. So you should see some feedback, and then eventually you should see the app in the emulator. Did you get that familiar Apache Cordova devices ready? Question. Yes, because what I did was, at a certain point in my handout, we go back to Eclipse. Um, right? Is that what I... Okay, then it's sheet number six. Okay, let me put sheet number six in there. Uh, seven. Uh, sheet number seven, then, I talk about uh, opening this up in Eclipse. Sorry about that. Let me put that sheet in a moment. But yes, what I'm typing here uh, is not is not in the handouts. Let me write it up here and I'll put it in the uh, in the drive. So we did Cordova. We could still use Eclipse. What, we're, what I'm doing right now is just showing you can go from beginning to end and never touch Eclipse anymore. But I'm gonna look at also, well I want to get to Eclipse because I don't want to type commands. So we can take it into Eclipse again. And that requires its own setup also. So let's see. Um, I did Cordova at platform. Okay, Cor there was Cordova build to build all possible platforms. Cordova build Android to only build Android app. Cordova um, emulate Android to run your app in the emulator. And I believe it, the last one is Cordova. I believe it's Cordova device Android to to run it on an attached device. Let me check it. Cordova device Android. Nope. Uh, and then there's also Cordova help. Emulate one on emulator. Cordova run device. Okay. Cordova run dash device. So I've got to look that one up to run it on the device, but let me save these into the network drive.
So we've got Cordova commands, txt. Uh, those are the last ones that I did about uh, build and, and emulate. And then I also put the, the sheet uh, Campos 7. That's the one that we'll be looking at about, OK, we've got this Cordova project. Maybe I don't want to stay in DOS. I want to do open this up in Eclipse. Um, so we'll get, we'll get to that one in a bit. But we're getting close to a break here. So I want to say, um, this is now more of the modern um, way to do apps, which you might think, well, this feels like a step back. I'm going back to DOS commands. Uh, but I'm seeing much more of this in modern web development, in app development. People just get it done faster typing a command. And you get it, uh, you get used to it, and you get faster at it. Uh, but we, we can still use Eclipse, which we will after the break. But what I've been talking about here, and, and I didn't do one part just yet, we'll do that after the break, about enabling permissions and en enabling the the functionality more of the device because right now it doesn't have access to vibration it doesn't have access to the camera it doesn't have any of that access so when we come back we'll we'll activate those those plugins i was just taking a diversion to show you that what we've got here is this is this cordova app and we can invoke it we can build it and then run it in a virtual device all through the through the through the prompt so let's take a break at 7.30 and come back at uh, 7.40, we'll keep, we'll press on. <laughs> 